Welcome to Unit 7 in Taxi and Private Hire Training. This is planning routes and fares. Three outcomes, know how to use a range of navigational and communication tools for accurate route planning, know the rules, safety measures and road restrictions relating to picking up and setting down your passengers, and third outcome, understand the requirements for displaying and quoting higher charges for regulated or unregulated fares. Outcome one, know how to use a range of navigational and communication tools for accurate route planning. We're gonna talk about maps. These are road atlases or UK maps or local street maps, commonly known as A to Zs. Technology, talk about the technology within your vehicle and on your PDA. Maps. A condition of license for many drivers in, the, in England is local street knowledge involving the ability to read and understand maps. In fact, some local authorities use maps as part of their licensing application test. Commonly termed the knowledge test, this may include, as I've said, or as I've just said, map reading ability, route selection local, route selection long distance, including motorways, and general topography of, the, of your licensing area. Having good knowledge of the roads, streets, surrounding areas. Types of my maps required by drivers reflect on the type of work undertaken. For most drivers, it will depend entirely on local knowledge, and if need be, resort to using town and city maps. As I've said, known as A to Zs. I've given you a couple of examples there. Uh, tourist maps, road atlases, and satellite navigation. Typical maps available to the driver, as I've mentioned. This is a small excerpt from a page in one of the maps, a street map. A small photograph shows an enlarged area of an AA street map, showing Richmond Lane on page six, which you can see on the top left-hand corner, and the street reference A2. In other words, you would look where the column of A meets the line of two, and you will find Richmond Lane. You will find um, these addresses in the index at the rear of the map book. That also applies to road atlases and UK maps. There are symbols on the, on the map excerpt I have on the right hand side. How many of these symbols can you recognize? Let's go through them. The P is obvious, parking. On the top right hand corner, we have the M in a house. That is a museum. In fact, it even tells you what type of museum, the Hall of Aviation. The bottom right hand corner, we have some masks. This is live theater, live entertainment, song, dance, theater, plays, etc. Alongside that, we have a business center which is colored. You will find certain things like hospitals and schools will be in different colors in the symbols at the front of the map book. There's a Virgin Cinema complex, as you can see. Top left hand corner, we have some roads and streets with red arrows. This indicates a one way system. Now you can see the roads have different colors, whether it's an A road or a B road. Please note that in street maps, the publishers themselves can use whichever color they wish. However, on a UK map, a road atlas, the colors and symbols are all the same. So for instance, a motorway is always blue on a UK map. A main A road, which is normally a dual carriageway, would be green. A single track A road would be red and B roads are yellow. You can see 
through the center of the map excerpt we have there, there's a black line. That indicates a railway. It goes across the B road, Canute Road, and you would expect that as it goes over the top for it to be a bridge across the road. Whereas further down at Maritime Way, it goes underneath. So Maritime Way is the actual bridge across. However, there's a symbol next to the black line on Canute Road saying LC. Very important for motorists, as this indicates that there is a level crossing. So you may get held up from time to time when the trains are going past. Other symbols to watch out for, PO, post office. PC, public convenience. And as I've said, LC, level crossing. Other symbols that are not shown on that street map there and symbols that you would find in ordnance survey maps, no matter what the scale, whether it be one to 25,000 or one to 50,000, scale is irrelevant. It's the symbol you are looking for. An italicized I is information center. A cross like a plus sign would be a place of worship, whether that be a mosque, a church, a chapel, a temple, or a synagogue. Also, you may want to watch out for, particularly London drivers at uh, TFL, is a sign looking like the underground that is red. That would be a bus or coach station. So, once you've found in the rear of the book, the map book, the street or town you're looking for, it will give you page number and grid reference. So for instance, 42, C3, 42 is the page number, it's just numbers. C3 is a letter and a number, is the place on the grid where you would find your destination. Good local knowledge has important benefits in terms of accuracy, so that a customer's expectations are met in the terms of fare. You are not going on the circuitous route, the long way round. So therefore you are not charging too much. It reduces or avoids complaints regarding that overcharging and poor timekeeping because you've used a circuitous route. This route, because of your lack of knowledge, may be the fact that on the way to the pickup, you go the long way around. You are wasting your time, your fuel, and late for the customer. Knowing where you are and where you have to get to assist the control in, controllers in maintaining efficiency levels. They can see on their screen your estimated time of arrival on a computer driven system. But should you go the long way around because you're not using your satellite navigation, they are giving the customers the wrong information. Particularly true if the customer doesn't have the app where they can track the vehicle themselves. Obviously, good local knowledge, um, it gives a high quality service, very efficient. So, Land Ranger maps, uh, these give uh, detail for topographical details in rural and coastal areas. In particular, it's ideal for drivers who has good customer potential in tourist areas, stately homes, walking trails, golf courses, areas of natural interest and beauty picnic spots. Don't forget the best golf courses, camp caravan sites, ferry crossings, heritage trails, ancient monuments and battle sites. These are places that your customers may want to visit. Very innovative in Manchester, the black cab drivers have actually div uh, devised a tourist tour where you can go around the sites of city center Manchester and surrounding areas. Let's move on to technology. I would imagine you all know how to use satellite navigation systems, but I'm just gonna go through some technological terms and acronyms that are currently used in sales brochures and the taxi and private hire trade press. Bluetooth is where components are connected wirelessly. 
So your earpiece to your PDA, etc. Your PDA is a personal digital assistant. It can be a standalone unit issued by your dispatch office, or it could be an app on your smartphone. GPS, Global Positioning Satellites, formerly known as GNSS, Global Navigational Satellite Systems. GPRS, General Packet Radio Service, is a backup system for the GPS, particularly in rural areas where there's a lack of signal. PMR, Professional Mobile Radio. These are obviously being phased out due to the advance of technology, but it's where it's a two-way radio in the car so you can speak to the dispatch office. SMS is texting. SatNav, by typing in an address, house number, postcode, you can plan your route. Destination points, restaurants, fuel stations, safety cameras can also be found. So if you are lost or you are in an unfamiliar area, what facility would you use on your satellite navigation system? You would use maps, because that way you're going to find your destination. You can have it on 2D, 3D. You can have it going north or directional. Outcome two. Know the rules, safety measures, and road restrictions related to picking up and setting down passengers. Discretionary rules and safety measures and certain restrictions. London licensed taxis on London private hire vehicles with the red route exemption sign can actually stop on the red route to pick up and set down passengers or wait for passengers whilst they get some cash from an ATM. This is for PCO registered drivers. An out of town driver cannot stop on a red route in London. A red route means a through route, no stopping. You have double yellow lines. Officially, you cannot pick up and drop off on double yellow lines or single yellows where there's time restrictions. So, for instance, on the caption I have, between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., there is no stopping or picking up or setting down or loading. Penalties may apply if drivers wait at cash machines on restricted sections outside permitted times. In Unit 6, we covered all about disabled passengers. Should you have a disabled passenger and they wish to be dropped off at their destination, which may be a doctor's surgery or a bank or a library, and there are double yellow lines, there is usually no set time limit for stopping and setting down as it may take a disabled passenger considerable time to board or alight from your vehicle. If ramps have to be deployed, obviously if they're in a wheelchair, that will increase the waiting period. The priority here is the safety of the passengers. You do not rush. It takes as long as it takes. Don't forget, should you get a penalty charge notice, particularly while you're helping a disabled person or someone else that needs assistance, you appeal through your licensing authority. However, if there are waiting or parking restrictions, the taxi or private hire vehicle cannot stop for longer than is necessary to safely, that's the key word, to safely complete the boarding or the lighting. Bus lanes. In London, taxis can pick up and set down in a bus lane, even if they're not allowed to drive in a bus lane. This applies in most areas. Should your customer be at a pickup spot where there's a bus lane, you can go into that bus lane to pick up. However, you must rejoin the main carriageway as soon as it is safe to do so. Drive along the bus lane with your indicator on and join the main flow of traffic when it is safe to do so. Some licensing authorities allow private hire drivers to drive in bus lanes. The majority do allow taxi drivers to drive in bus lanes. The only thing I can say about bus lanes for you is read the signs. Some are 24 hour as well. Some are rush hour only, for instance, 7 a.m. till 10 a.m from 4 p.m. till 7 p.m. Bus stops. B 
Be particularly careful when using bus stops to board and alight your passengers. I would always recommend that you drive slightly four or five yards beyond the bus stop so you're not hindering the bus driver from doing his duties at the bus stop. Should you stop before the bus stop, the bus driver will have to go around you to access the bus stop. So do not obstruct the bus from entering the stop. If you are at the bus stop, the low floor is no longer accessible. We have a high curb and a low floor, so people can easily step onto the bus. Anybody elderly and disabled will find it difficult in boarding and lighting if the bus has to stop elsewhere. And obviously the bus driver uh, is delayed at the stop, can't carry out his duties. Safety measures and restrictions. At airports and rail stations, you should always cooperate with police and security staff, particularly as we're on high alert regarding terrorism. Our hospitals always cooperate with security so that you are not blocking emergency entrances and exits. Particularly at these transport hubs, always keep alert to any new rules and regulations. Pick up and drop off regulations may change from time to time. And I mentioned about terrorism. Alert the police or security staff if you note anything suspicious at all. A lot of terrorist plots have been foiled due to the public alerting the authorities about suspicious activity around transport hubs. At meet and greet at the airport, note your parking area, always be prepared to assist passengers. So make sure you're in the right pickup spot and always be prepared to help the passengers with the luggage. Always ensure that it is your customer that has booked the vehicle. And be patient, restrictions are a nuisance, they're there for a reason, usually for security reasons. Follow the signs, follow the rank instructions, the rank guidelines. Do not take instructions from your customer as this may be breaking the rules on the rank guidelines. Outcome three, understand the requirements for displaying or quoting higher charges for regulated or unregulated fares. We're going to talk about fare tables, private hire charges, booking and dispatch systems, PDAs, taxi meters, data heads and any peripherals, cash recon reconciliation and accounting. With Hackney drivers, taxi drivers, the fare table is fit by the district council, the local authority. From time to time, they may change the rates in connection with the hire of the Hackney carriage and publish them as fare table of fares. This table of fares is a legal document and has to be displayed inside the carriage in a position that is clearly visible to the passengers so that they can see a breakdown of all the charges. The local licensing authority will inform the taxi driver as to the parameters of his or her operation. This will be the local licensing boundary or controlled district. Within the boundary, the tariff sheet from the fare table will be used, you will use the meter to dictate the fare charge. Going outside of the boundary, the driver should agree a set fare with his customer before the start of the journey, which allows the meter to be turned off. Where would the driver get these fares from? If he joins the local Hackney Association, he would get it from a fare table issued in a booklet by the association. Also, when a driver does agree a fare with the customer and goes out of area, he should make a note of the date, time, pickup, destination, and the fare he charged in his diary. So he has a paper record, should there be any questions asked about that particular fare. Because the council issues the fare table for Hackney drivers, a council who wishes to fix new fares or change any of the charges must publish them in at least one local newspaper 
with any objections to be raised by the public within 14 days from the date of publication. Don't forget, this new table of fares or tariff sheet must be displayed inside the Hackney carriage in a position that is clearly visible to all of the passengers. All Hackney drivers have to install a tariff meter, a fare meter. So electronic taxi meters store tariffs structurally. This is stored electronically. The structure usually holds a number of tariffs for operational use. Here is just one example. Tariff one is what's known as the day tariff, which is the tariff you see on the fare sheet. I've put, for instance, half past six in the morning till midnight. Tariff two, night tariff, this might be 25% extra, or in some areas, 33% extra. Midnight to 6.30 the following morning. And sometimes this includes a Sunday tariff. Tariff three, bank holidays, could be as much as 50% extra on the, on, the, on the fare. And tariff four, this would apply at Christmas and New Year, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. This is normally a 100% increase, so double the fare. Also, with on the tariff sheet, extras are listed, such as luggage, extra passengers, dogs, but not assistance dogs. You cannot charge for assistance dogs. The meter is automatic. Uh, it's calendar controlled, so the tariffs will change with the time or with the date. It is not a manual operation. Another tariff that's not included there, the tariff on the fare table is normally set for four or five passengers. Should it exceed that, there is normally a 50% charge added to the displayed fare. Or you can go on to tariff two yourself for extra passengers if your licensing authority allowed, allow you to do so. The tariff is broken down into a number of pricing elements. So again, an example, we have the flag fare, which is the fare that shows on the meter as the, as the meter is started when the customer is prepared to start the journey. Traveling up to a mile, it will increase, two miles increase, obviously. It's based on yardage. So the, it will click up 20 pence, for instance, at so many yards until it reaches the final fare. It will also include time when the vehicle is stationary for more than 59 seconds. We'll click up 20 pence or even 25 pence a minute, depending on the tariff set by the local authority. In the private hire monthly, a driver can compare fares across the UK to see which areas are, are, are basically more affluent and charging more money. Private hire driver. Once again, the taxi meter for the period of hire is the, is the preferred and best option. This is usually built into your PDA or data head. Should you be on the old radio system, you will need to have a standalone meter. However, there is no law in the UK that says a private hire driver has to have a meter. He can work on charts with mileage on his odometer, he can work on set fares from one area to another. If requested, the driver should give an approximate cost of the meter journey. Uh, they can use the fares from a book of fares issued by the local association going out of town. This is private hire charge for the taxi driver. The meter is not used, therefore, the fare cost should always be given to the hire in advance before the journey starts. If you cannot agree on a set fare, or if the customer insists you use the meter, then you use the meter. Private hire drivers, as I say, taxi meter, best option. Uh, there's no law in the UK for private hire drivers to have meters, but you would normally would have, as I say, in your PDA or data head. Once again, if requested, an approximate cost of the journey should be given to the hire, hire by the, either the driver or the operator if the driver is unsure. The private hire costs need to be competitive. 
they are usually lower than the hackney rate you can't charge more than the hackney rate and the higher charges will be displayed within the company office so the staff can see a breakdown of all the charges should you have a waiting room these higher charges will be displayed in the waiting room so that the public can see a breakdown of all the charges this is an operator's condition of license obviously with technology nowadays private hire drivers have no need to return to the operator's office for the next job it's not a requirement anyway under any legislation the driver can be contacted by the controller or sent a job on his pda or data head it's very efficient the private hire driver should take the most direct route available i've mentioned it a few times you must not go the long route or the circuitous route the fares are normally based on postcode addresses with carefully timed distances to ensure that they are competitive with their competition cheapest is not always the best but you need to be competitive you have to give value for money you should also give a clear indication to the customer the duration of the journey you can see this on your PD, PDA or data head where it says estimated time of arrival. Your system should take any contingencies, holdups in traffic into the equation before the journey starts. It may be that you want to go on an alternative route. However, if you do this, you have to get the agreement of the customer. So any holdups or delays, inform the customer of the holdups suggest an alternative route then if the customer agrees and only then the driver has the authority to progress by the alternative route he has suggested for longer journeys that end in another district taxi drivers and the hire hire as i've said enter into a private hire agreement that is they agree what the set fare will be going to the destination this is beneficial to both parties the driver he knows what is going to be paid the customer they know what they are going to be charged the driver must ensure that she he or she has the consent of the hirer about this set fare before the journey starts and therefore the taxi meter is switched off should you not communicate properly or mumble or deliberately not make your intentions clear so that the hire is confused this could lead to complaints against you or even an offense under the town police clauses act so remember all taxi drivers and private hire regulations state that a passenger must be taken by the most direct route unless there is good reason to take an alternative route and the customer has agreed with that alternative route any other route would be considered devious in law and an offence. Should the customer give you instructions about the route they want to take, even though that might be a longer route, and you advise them that that is a longer route, they insist that they still want to go that route, you would follow the customer's instructions and it is not considered to be an offence. Booking and dispatch systems. We're going to talk about uh, larger private hire operators. Uh, they can invest in a fully integrated computer facility, which is the norm nowadays. The operator investment is in a fully integrated computer facility can include such features as GPS, global positioning, satellite tracking facility. They know where you are and what you are doing. All computerized booking systems uh, will recognize existing customers' phone numbers with addresses and their regular destinations. Data dispatch is much quieter than the, the old radio voice messaging. Um, there is predictive plotting of vehicle speeds and movements so they know how long you're going to take for the pickup or to the drop off, and they can inform the customer of such. Also, there's an app. That the customer can have on their smartphone where they can actually track the vehicle themselves uh, you can have auto book on the system which is where when you phone the uh, dispatch office it will say if you are at let's just make an address up a home address uh, seven maruba court and you want a taxi now press one should you need to speak to the operator 
press zero. The benefits of Autobook is all calls are answered. It takes priority on the system when you press one so that the job goes straight out to the nearest driver. So it's very efficient. And another major benefit is it helps customers who have hearing impairments because it is a computer speaking clearly to you and you're not picking up any background or peripheral noise from the dispatch office. Another feature on your PDA or data head is the call and text back facility. This is a massive benefit to the driver as regards security because he knows that the customer coming is his customer, it's bespoke. It's a massive advantage to the customer too, because he can be in the pub or restaurant and the message comes through to him that the taxi or the private hire vehicle has arrived. And on that, it may give the car registration number, the driver name, and with some, with some uh, companies, even a photograph of the driver. So that gives security and safety to the customer as well. Within the system, in the vehicle, you can have card payment systems and printers to print receipts out, card payment systems so that the driver is not carrying as much cash and the customer can easily pay the fare. That is a controller screen where she can see uh, drivers where they are and what they're doing. P, the drivers are parked up, um, where they're red, they are busy with a T in, they're on time, L in, they're slightly behind schedule, so they're late. The yellow symbol is where drivers are busy at the moment, but they are soon to clear. They are within a couple of minutes of dropping their passengers off. We've got the green one, the green symbol where the drivers are available. We have a bus symbol. On the left-hand side, we have H in purple. These are drivers on account work for hotels. Um, you can set this system up with the technology experts to suit your own system. So you can use whichever symbols you want. Fully or, compute, fully or part, computerized systems offer the taxi and private hire companies an effective means of delivering a fast, and this is the important bit, efficient service with various benefits. So telephone number of the customer phoning is displayed. Should the address not come up, if it's not a regular customer, the address details are taken. Once those are in the system, they are in the system next time that number phones. You've got internet or app on your smartphones booking. IVR, interactive voice response and voice recognition systems, secured trans card transactions over the phone or in the vehicle. Text messaging and marketing. So you can send messages through the PDA or the data head to drivers warning them of road holdups or general messages. You can also uh, use the system for marketing where you can send your customers messages about certain offers or wishing them greetings at certain times of the year like Christmas. You could do ride share or courier work. The beauty of the job is uh, is the computerized system, is that all job details are immediately transferred to the nearest vehicle. Comes, it comes as a job on the PDA or data head, and that saves the driver time and fuel, and also for the customer, very efficient because the nearest vehicle will be dispatched. The text or callback facility is activated by the driver when he's close to the pickup area, normally within 200 meters. The message is then relayed to the customer that his vehicle has arrived, it is bespoke. Should the job on your screen be an account job, the account management system is straightforward as it will invoice the customers at the end of the month and pay the driver. As I mentioned earlier, Autobook allows the customers to book a taxi or private hire vehicle without having to speak to an operator. So this service is actually ideal for regulars, regular customers such as pubs, clubs, hotels, and corporate accounts, where they can just press the one button. It frees up operators at peak times to take calls off the telephone. So more jobs are taken. More work is made available to all the drivers, particularly at peak times. Autobook a response to all customers that call. 
And as I mentioned, it's a massive benefit for customers with impaired hearing because of the lack of background noise. Let's talk about text and callback again. Obviously, it speeds up the operation by reducing waiting times. Nearest car to the job is sent. Offers is bespoke service to customers. The, the customer will get a text message to say that the vehicle has dis been dispatched. It will say that the vehicle has arrived or will be arriving shortly. It assists the driver in reducing the number of no jobs. Uh, no jobs is where the driver cannot find or trace the customer. A message comes to the customer's phone, no matter where they are or how busy the pub or club or restaurant is. It's bespoke. It comes through to the customer that has booked the vehicle. It's a massive increase for security for drivers, particularly in risky or rougher areas where there's been a history of robberies and muggings. So, for instance, high rise flats, high risk areas where there's subways, etc., or very compact uh, housing or lack of street lighting. mentioned in the unit six customers with travel pass can have their fares discounted with agreement with the local authority if your company is part of the travel pass freedom pass or taxi voucher scheme your fare has to be adjusted to take into account these discounts should the passenger give you a, a travel voucher for the full fare this is legal tender and can be redeemed at your dispatch office you cannot refuse to give the discounted fare or cannot refuse to accept the travel voucher. Should your passenger have a parking pass for disabled parking pass, this can be used by the taxi or private hire driver to park in disabled bays and wait on double yellows um, whilst the customer is coming to you or getting out of the vehicle. Taxi meters within taxis. Um, can accept uh, credit and debit cards, giving full law authorization and usually a minimum of 15 seconds. They can also print a customer receipts. As regards your PDA or data head, you would have to give a handwritten receipt. Don't forget, should the customer wish to have a receipt, you need to provide one. A receipt will help reconcile your day's take ins and it's always given when the customer asks for one. The taxi meter can handle multiple and progressive tariffs. So we've got tar tariff one, day tariff, tariff two, the night tariff or Sunday tariff, tariff three, bank holidays, and tariff four, Christmas and New Year. These are all automatic, managed by time, date. So the meter would change automatically. You do not do anything manually. Also, contacts, it contacts the, uh, the fare on distance and time. So within the meter, you can do end of shift reports. End of shift is important because you may be sharing that vehicle with another driver. You don't want to do end of day reports because you may get the other driver's take-ins within the meter. You can have password protection. Fully calendar control, don't forget. Totalizing functions so you can do end of shift, end of week, etc. External ports for putting peripheral printers on, etc. Fully integrated system. The meter on a taxi is connected to the roof sign. So when the vehicle is for hire, the sign is illuminated. When the vehicle is hired and the meter is started, the roof sign would be extinguished, turned off. Fully computerized systems, integrated systems. The advantages, much safer. You get the correct customer and the driver is safer too. It's more responsive, it's much quicker, much efficient. There are fuel savings for the driver and less dead time less running time there are much fewer complaints from the customer again because it's more efficient and they're being contacted via text kept up to date with where the driver is disadvantages 
as with all technology, it is costly and does still require trust from the drivers to the dispatchers because they can be overridden manually. So therefore, all controllers and dispatchers have to be totally impartial and let the computer do its job. Should they override a job, it's usually because it's an important pickup where someone has a train or a plane to catch. As with all technology, it becomes increasingly out of date. So you need to keep on top of things if you want to be the best in your area. So you need to invest in future technology constantly. On that picture, that taxi driver is available for hire. It indicates the taxi is empty and he's looking for customers. He's either on the rank or he's driving around his borough. Once he's hired, the taxi meter enters in at the stage at the start of the trip and the hire sign is therefore extinguished as soon as the meter is, commenced, is started. At this stage, the running fare and the present fare are tariff uh, displayed. So the flag fare is displayed and as soon as he starts the journey, the running fare is continually displayed. Additional information can be uh, put into the meter at the start of the journey which are the extras for luggage, etc. So, at the end of the journey, the driver will press the stop button. This would show the metered fare and any extras that were put on at the start of the journey. So, on the caption I have there, the total fare would be twenty pound and twenty pence. At the end of the hire, the driver enters the stage to collect the payment. He will give change and provide a receipt if required. Once he clears the meter, the exterior roof light will illuminate again to alert potential passengers that he is available for hire once again. This is why you would give a set fare going out of your district. Should you have a meter fare going out of district and you press the clear button, automatically your roof light will come on saying you are available for hire. This is an offence because you are out of area. On a set fare, the light would be extinguished anyway. Example I've got there, flag fare, start of journey. After 600 yards, it clicks up. And every 200 yards after that, if you've got waiting time, more than 59 seconds, it would click up again. This is all automatic, don't forget, automatic. But also don't forget that vehicle size is also a tariff. So if you've got more than four or five passengers, depending on your tariff table, that could be a tariff as well. Distance traveled, waiting time is flipped automatically. When the tariff changes, the memory chip within the meter will need to be reprogrammed or even replaced. It really, this, is also, this is required whenever the licensing ceremony makes any changes at all to the tariff, whether that includes clock times, calendar dates within the tariff itself. So the day tariff might change from, from 6.30 a.m. till 6 a.m., for instance. It's only a small change, but the my memory chip will need to be reprogrammed. It could be that some of the extra charges for instance, for luggage may be increased from 20 pence to 25 pence, for instance. Once again, the memory chip will need to be reprogrammed. Who carries out the reprogram of the memory chip? The main person that would carry out the reprogramming of independent tariff meters would be the manufacturer or an agent of that manufacturer. Obviously, when it's a private hire company, this would be changed within the office. So it's sent out to all the data heads and PDAs automatically. But on a, on a standalone meter in a Hackney carriage, this has to be done by the manufacturer or the local agent of the manufacturer. In some areas, uh, particularly rural areas, it may be the licensing authority themselves that carry out the reprogramming. To prevent, once it's been reprogrammed and to prevent any future interference with that meter, 
The meter must be totally secured and made tamper proof with a seal. It is an offence to interfere with that seal. So, once it's been reprogrammed, the meter needs to be checked, both for time and distance. This is done by carrying out a series of, series of drops over a standard mile. So they can see that the tariff is changing at the correct yardage and that the fare at the first mile is correct. It will also check waiting time by standing still for one minute. Using GPS, global position satellites, and modern data units, a vehicle can be lo located within 20 feet. That's usually a maximum. The driver on that screen can also check where he is in the queue for a job, what position he is in a different area, and how many drivers are in that area. So a number of private hire or taxis operating in the same area as himself. Any general message received from the office and also any jobs waiting in other areas, jobs waiting to be dispatched where there's no drivers. Once you get received the job, it will have the job number, the time, date, pickup address, destination, customer's name, and sometimes the special requests on the screen, such as the customer needs assistance, etc. There's examples of a PDA and a data head within the vehicle. We're going to talk about cash reconciliation. It is still in the main a cash industry, although more and more companies are accepting payment by card, whether it be debit or credit card. You must be able to calculate change, so you must have, be able to do good mathematics. So, the passenger should have their change counted to the amount offered. For example, if a £5 note is offered for a £2.60 fare, the driver should count the change, 2 times 20 pence, 2 times £1 coin, and save the customer £2.40 in change before handing it over. Actually show them the change as well before handing it over. This method is better and safer than counting, handing out uncounting change to a passenger who may later disagree with your calculation. Should the customer give you a five pound note or a 10 pound note, leave it on display on the far right hand side of your dashboard until the change is given so that the customer can't say to you, I gave you a 10 pound note, mate, not a five pound, or I gave you a 20 pound note, not a 10 pound note. Keep accounts. You are self-employed. Keep a weekly account book. That way you can see all your income and expenditure and thereby make savings or change your shifts to increase your income. You may find that it's better to work on a Sunday day rather than a Saturday night due to the fact there's less drivers out there. As a new driver, over a period of a couple of months, change your shifts log your hours, log your mileage, and log your income. That way you can see which is the most efficient and best way to, work, to earn. So your income can be broken down into fares and tips from your customers. Tips, the other word we use is gratuities. Account work. Don't forget at the end of the week that you've done account work. You may not get paid to the end of the month. It's still that weekly income. Should you own the car and wish to rent it to another driver, you're getting income from the vehicle. And just for safety reasons, and I've mentioned this in unit one, taxi drivers who are carrying money, particularly £20 notes, should deposit it at home when calling, when calling in or hide it in the vehicle for safekeeping. All your cash bags, wallets, purses, coin holders should be hidden from view to reduce the temptation for theft. Do not flash your cash. Expenditure. Please get receipts and make notes of all your expenditure. For instance, your fuel and oil, your vehicle rent if you don't own the vehicle, the booking or dispatch office charges or their percentage of your fares, 
meter purchase if you have to buy a meter. Obviously, for the Hackney driver, you have to buy a meter. Your PDA and mobile charges, vehicle insurance, vehicle test, repair, and servicing. This is one a lot of drivers ignore. Vehicle cleaning and valeting. If you're paying £10 a week for cleaning of the vehicle, it's £500 a year. You will get 20% tax relief on that, which is £100. Your road fund license, print out your receipt. Should you be high, should be have your per, uh, vehicle on higher purchase or through a loan arrangement where you're paying so much off a month with the interest, you put that through on your accounts to get your tax relief. Medical fee with your doctor. This course that you've paid for, training and qualification fees. Should you have to wear a uniform? laundry of that uniform the hmrc will normally allow you two pound a week for laundry charges which is a hundred pound a year 20 percent tax relief licensing fees with your local authority should you join a local trade association your subscription to that trade association any bank charges or fees miscellaneous items such as using your home for an office particularly if you're a one-man band your personal pension. All these are expenditures where you will receive tax relief when doing your end of year accounts. I would recommend to all self-employed people that you get a registered chartered accountant to do your accounts for you to send off your annual returns to HMRC. Taximeter that meets the measuring instruments, taximeters regulations 2009 will have a non resettable totalizing function that aid the taximeter owner to download relevant data to include the total. These can show distance traveled by the taxi, total distance, distance traveled when hired, so therefore you can work out what the dead mileage was by simple subtraction, the number of hirings on that particular shift. The amount of money charge of supplements or extras and the amount of money charged as actual fares. These totalized values have to be internally stored on the on the microchip within the meter for a year for purpose of downloading any data to a third medium. Modern dispatch systems allow operators to use price matrix to charge different rates. This is a chart starting and ending locations. So your particular licensing authority within the private hire industry will be split into zones. So they can have a chart stating the fare from zone one, for instance, to zone three is five pounds. Zone one to zone eight is 12 pounds, for instance. For each location, the operator can say how much the customer will pay, pay how much the driver will receive, and how much the operator will keep. This would normally be done as well, where the operator owns the vehicle and you're on what we call a percentage of fares rather than a weekly track fee or a weekly radio fee, which is still the slang used. Um, percentage of fares, it could be 60-40, where you would provide your own fuel, or 50-50, where the operator would ensure that the car is full of fuel at the start of your shift. As I've said, for new drivers in particular, keep a record of your fares you take, your expenditures, your mileage, the time you actually worked, how long your shift was. Then you can calculate when it is best to work. Thank you for listening to Unit 7. Please check your understanding as this completes the unit. Review and check your understanding before moving on to the next unit. Thank you.